We're gonna we're gonna jump into our ale academy. <laughs> All I can hear is, don't ever set the bar too high. That way, you're not exceeding your expectations, mm-hmm. and you're not letting yourself down. Yeah, set yourself to a low bar. And it's, it's easy to beat that one. Yeah, that's but not fair. with our ale academy. We set a very high bar. We actually have to stand on something in the back because this bar is too high. I have to wear high heels. And so Liz is wearing too heels short. because, as <laughs> you may have noticed, she grew like three inches from her little face they're being two hidden inches. by the they're, microphone. They're two inch heels. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to unravel the secrets of sour beers, mm-hmm. which, in my life, are a personal oh, favorite yeah. of mine. Yeah. Let's get some That's options good. out so, here. We're going to talk about sours. Sours are a very unique style of beer, and as I stated, one of my favorites. Um, they are sour. Uh, they tend to be a little bit funky, a little bit sour, a little bit tart. Uh, there's a lot of descriptions of, like, farmhouse flavors and smells, and you're like, why would I want to taste that? That doesn't even make sense. Or, like, I don't understand. Horse it, blanket. Horse blanket. Like, it's you're like, that sounds disgusting. And I get it does. But it is oddly delicious, and one of my favorite parts about sours is they pair so nicely with food. With food, oh, they're great. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, we yeah, just I got just a couple these. options. Yeah, yeah I, I dig it. We'll do a quick little rundown to kind of get you an idea of what we got going on. Uh, a lot of times, sours come in bottles, as you can see. They don't always. They can also come in cans. They're often fruited. Hence why you're going to have this big, beautiful color. I think you can probably see it. Um, because they have, like, the extra fruit in it. They also are usually wild fermented, as we're going to come into what that means with the yeast. Um, a lot of times you get big bomber bottles of them. Uh, usually breweries, a lot of breweries will have sours. Uh, a lot of times they age in barrels. And they a lot of times they're, like, a bit more specialty. They take longer to age. Uh, places that do them sometimes only do them, which is cool. Um, so this is going to be local out of Fort Collins. Uh, I wanted to the fruit it off with this one. Uh, Jessup. Jessup. There we yep. go. Um, this is one of my favorite breweries in general. I think they're very unique. And they have a farm. And everything they put in... Well, basically everything they put in the beers they grow like on the farm. So they do like mushroom beers and apricots. And then yep. they do... Food pairing wise, they do like fermented... That's the best part. Extra foods that pair with the sours. And it's fantastic. Uh, their name's called Scratch. Super fun. They have unique bottles. Their whole setup is unique. And then, outside of it being often, like, wheats and fruited ales and stuff like that, you can do a sour. Like, sours are often relatively common. There are dark sours as well. You can sour any type of beer. Those are just kind of a little bit more of the common ones. I do think we have a dark sour in there. Probably can have thrown that out, but uh, sour. Sour IPA. Oh, okay, so what did I say? Sour ale? You, yeah, you just said sour on sour. Oh, shit. Oh, there you go. Sour IPA is what I did say. Right. Yeah. That's what you're here for to catch Can't me. be perfect. Yeah. These are just some that are lying around the house yeah. also some of the favorites like chelsea said um scratch yeah. is one of her favorites um uh i went to jessup for the first time this summer in fort collins after we got done camping at horse tooth yeah. and it was incredible i think we came back with uh, quite a few bottles that a lot. day and <laughs> a lot of people. and this is one that does remain i'm super excited to get back in and have some sours yeah. and do some pairings with you uh, it's been fun, of course, going down the journey of hot varieties, especially in the waters, and getting into the malts as well, or lack thereof malts in yeah. our non-alcoholic beverages. Uh, it's been a total eye-opener for my palate and for fa- flavor profiles, but this is probably the thing I'm most excited to get back into, especially for yeah. the pairings. Yeah. So, yeah. So, fantastic. We, I, I'm excited for Liz to be drinking <laughs> I it's mean, like, I, I drank this, one day, but that was yeah. work-related, it was and work it was related. just a beer. Yeah. The, 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 the fun things about, like, these sours, and, like, we're, as you can see, like, they're pretty big bottles. Like, they're pretty hefty, and a lot of times, for me, they're short. Like, I love sours, but I can't sit, like, and take down a whole bomber by myself. And so they like maybe you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> they they tend to be shares. Kevin doesn't like sours, so he actually just gave me crap that we have like a bunch of like sour beers just like dying in the fridge down here. And I'm like, well, it's because I don't have anyone to drink sours with. Give it a couple days. And we'll be back. And do some food <laughs> pairings with them. That's right. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, Scroll away, my friends. We'll elaborate a little bit. Um, yeah, of what it, yeah, what makes it sour. Yeah, we'll get into the <laughs> secrets of sours. Uh, so as Chelsea said, we're going to embark on the exploration, exploration of the sours as they be. It's a very tantalizing world of sour beers. Sadly, uh, they're often misunderstood. Like she said, Kevin's not a big fan. They're also great for giving you heartburn. Yeah. Not a super fun aspect of it. But um, these complex brews definitely um, have been capturing the hearts of beer connoisseurs for a very long time. Yeah. And, and around the globe, right? It's not a new thing. It's not an old thing. And it's not a regional thing. So today... We really want to get behind those secrets of these beautiful uh, delights and crack the code to their unique flavors. Yep. So, uh, if you don't have one already, make sure to grab a beverage, crack it open, maybe a sour, and we'll get into it a little bit more. Yeah, or if uh, you're at a brewery, go check something out. Oh, get, yeah. Try it out. They're great on flights. Because, again, if you decide you don't like it, you only have a little, like, four ounce of it. So, who cares? It's great. Try to go for it last. Yeah. yeah. Um, I personally am, like, a fan of, like, we kind of talked about barrel aging, right? Um, so they are going to be sour. Um, and the sour is going to come from the fermentation. Uh, usually it's going to be like a wild fermented yeast, uh, which means it's going to come from, I mean, not always, but like you either have like wild fermented yeast that come from the air, they come from flowers, they come from the fruits that like they came in on uh, and the bacteria. And over time, which is why you put it in like a barrel to age and it will just kind of keep like growing and growing and getting all these unique funky flavors to it. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, what a lot of breweries will do is they'll actually find a yeast strain that they like and they like the flavors that the sour comes out of and they'll recreate that over and over again, right? Like you can petri dish yeast strains and then keep adding it in and reusing it right. uh, already by like soured yeast strains uh, mm -hmm. to add in. So there, there's a couple of different places that come from. They're not all wild fermented. This would be wild fermented. Um, they actually do like the fermentation tank is a big open, I think they call them like bathtubs. It's not quite a bathtub, but that's the concept of it. And it's just the air that comes in their boulder, like whatever yeast and bacteria are coming in from the air in boulder, like where the thing sits actually has open windows to the outside and it just grabs what's floating around and creates these unique, really awesome flavors. Uh, so those are ones that unless they like go through and scientifically extract that yeast out to recreate again, you will not have this type of beer again once like the batch is done and gone. So they're, they're really cool. They're very unique. And awesome. then they sit in That's barrels so cool. and they age and they yeah. get flavors from the barrels. Um, a lot of people that like wine, really like sours because you get more of that depth uh they're also often lower in alcohol and you get all that depth and extra flavor to them that sure. they're, they're sippers they're yeah. not yeah. not like lagers that they you want to drink quick that are really like get done because they're cold like these are the sippers and yeah sim similar to your uh, your warmers or your stouts right like you give them uh, uh some temperature to warm up to or serve them at a slightly warmer temperature you're gonna get a lot of different flavor profiles yeah. out of them yeah Right. Um, rather than the cold, cold lager. Yeah. Um, right. So like a symphony for any of you music lovers out there, a sour beer uh, is an orchestra, basically, that's composed of these different strains of yeast that you're talking about. Right. It's, yep. a, it's a symphony of bacteria and fermentation inside the bottle. Not a symphony of destruction, but that's a great song <laughs> saying that because it started playing in my head. Uh, <laughs> so all of these contributing their own like flavorful notes to the process. And some of these uh, flavor notes might be hints of citrus. Um, while others offer that funky and earthy tones, um, you kind of got into that already. Uh, but when the magic really starts to happen is that fermentation process of these organisms that transform the sugars in the beer, mm -hmm. right? Creating a medley of flavors that really are surprising and excite your taste buds, right? Kind of make them dance. Yeah. They yeah, make like them go, ah! Ooh. Just like that. Just like that, huh? <laughs> Got me excited by opening this bottle right here. <sighs> Don't do it. I that would be really hard for me not to have. Like I'm, uh, I ready. literally have the Pavlov effect right now. Just talking about it, I'm just I'm salivating I'm, in my I'm mouth. I'm 100 percent salivating. <sighs> like a good example. This one is uh, strawberries and rosemary. <sighs> like just not like your standard flavors that you're coming. You're gonna get out of like 
most of like your IPA is coming forward. Uh, and it's just, they're, they're just really cool. This one's got CIPA. Yeah, that's the And then this guy is, I don't remember. Mum. Mum. Does it say? It says bottle conditioned. Brewed with hop spitters and flavored with sage, basil, lemon, thyme, rosemary, and lavender from our garden and fermented with our wild mixed house culture. So the if it's like a house culture, that's not going to be... They did exactly what we kind of talked about. They got the different mixture from, from the, the air. Yeah. They extracted it out, and now they're repeat using it over so they can get that same flavor of sour repeating itself in different beers. Uh, right. It gives you a little bit more control. Like It's fun to have the random, but at the same time, like... People love consistency and they want to come back to something they know and love. Uh, and so they'll reuse different strands to kind of keep that same in-house flavor. So that's For a sure. great example of everything that we just talked about in one little bottle. It's a cute bottle, it's too. It's a cute bottle. I think it might, like... It's got a big butt. Yeah. It's I might belly. use it for, like, an oil bottle after we drink it. Nice. Yeah. Put the little beep dripper on it. Yeah. The pour spout. Pour spout. There we go. Right. So... I think that, that, that's kind of the basics of sours. They don't have to be fruited. They often are. Uh, there's also, like, I think of, like, goes, gozes. Those are, like, kettle sours. So they're kind of, like, I don't want to say forced sours, but they're not sitting in barrels. Like, this one is barrel-aged for 15 months. And they're, they're not doing that. Like, they're a little bit more forced through. And they just have a different, different flavor. And they're, they're not bad. They tend to be more, I feel like, tart and, like, refreshing, where these are more, like, complex and sour versus tart okay. they, they seem a little different to me but that's the best i got so hopefully you get a chance to get out there try some sours and let us know if you love them hate them or indifferent <laughs> we love them <laughs> we do we love them so, wraps up ales academy uh ale academy is brought to you by our affiliate partner the microbrew beer of the month club they drink a lot of bad beer, so you don't have to. Uh, they're a great little program. Try out a bunch of different beers. You don't have to have the stress of going to the store and deciding what to pick. They just send it right to your door. Stress gone. Uh, they do, as we learned, have like an international and like a national program that you can pick between. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I do either or, but I think like the international would be kind of cool to see what other beers come For sure. internationally. We should throw the video in of... Um receiving yeah, the box a little open package thing. We'll but, um, so the affiliate partnerships uh, it's those that help us keep bringing you this content uh, every week on the Body by Beer podcast uh, so if you love what you hear and you want to explore some incredible beers make sure to click on the affiliate link at the very bottom sure. it's truly a win-win for everybody it is and thanks for the support <laughs>